Oh. <laughs> so now we know what that smell in the bathroom was. I was expecting to find a lot more mold in the ceiling, but now I know. Where is that pipe going? Gotta find out. Hey, if you've been a victim of some creative contracting, then I would love to hear your story. Throw it in the comment section. People need to know the kind of things that people are getting away with so they know what to look for. Cheers. We're not gonna do too much for this today. We're gonna just take this, we're gonna reinstall it in the new cavity, and that's it. Life is simple. I don't even have to undo the wiring, and because I'm moving it to a cavity closer to the source, I have more than enough wire. If you see how this is made, it's made that you can have the, the screw in the wall in advance and then slide it over, okay? Yeah, crazy, right? So I'm gonna set my finish height right about here. Yeah, that'd be nice. Just so I have something to hang it on when I take it off. Okay. And then I'll put this one right here. Disengage. That's how easy that was. You know it's done right when it falls apart, right? There we go. Let's get the wire out of the way. Slide that over. Hang my fan. Get that other screw back out of the ceiling. Save that screw. Now, one quick step. I've got my fan mounted right where I want it. And that is pretty much flush with the drywall. And I'll tell you why. It is a lot easier to install a bathroom fan flush with the drywall when you put your new drywall on. And then I can take my roto zip. I can come up here with that blade, skip over the side, and then trace the outside of that fan. Piece of cake, okay? Now, for best practice, take this one and you put it in this hole right here so that it isn't gonna come loose and slide around on you. That keeps the fan from coming loose and wiggling over time. Perfect, all right. Now all I gotta do is drill a hole through the rim joist, through the brick, Piece of cake. I got tricks for all of that. But first, I gotta take this pipe that was going nowhere, and just to demonstrate the fact, I'm gonna rip it out of the ceiling. Whew. Now, we're gonna actually intentionally move this wire away from all the ducting so that we don't have any issues. All right, now we just gotta get our hole outside and then connect my flexible ducting. Piece of cake. Except the walls are two feet thick. We're gonna need some bit extensions. Okay, here we go. Let's get rid of this dewy, fuzzy mess. Oh, that stinks. Oh. That's nasty. Oh, fucking dead mouse. Oh. <laughs> so now we know what that smell in the bathroom was. I was expecting to find a lot more mold in the ceiling, but now I know. Oh, damn. Two mice in that duct? How in the hell did they even get in there? Where is that pipe going? Gotta find out. Okay, so here we are. <laughs> I covered myself in deep woods off. It stinks so bad in here, I put a mask on. I never even wear a mask, but this is actually helping. If they got in through the fan, like, that's work, man, because the grill was on. So this might go into a wall cavity and they followed the warm air and then just didn't have anywhere else to go. But I don't know what to find. Like, oh, this is just... Okay, there's no more carcasses coming out, so that's good news. What in the hell is going on in here? I literally, I can't roll it because of the foam. All right, let's see if we can break this foam loose. Let's get this up into the room here. Yeah, you can see the foam is, is wrapped around the pipe. I'm just gonna draw this out for you guys, right? Here's the joist cavity. And I've got one inch and a half pipe coming up and then goes to the back of the cavity, okay? 
and I got this two inch pipe here that's just going straight back to the cavity and then it goes up. This one goes to the back and then up. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at. This is the one and a half. This is venting for the toilet. This two inch was venting from the fan, but instead of venting out, it's going up. They might have tied them together, which means that something could have worked its way back up through my septic, gone up to the vent, found that connection and worked its way back down because it's all air. <laughs> they could have been baby rats. <laughs> oh, nasty. The only way to know if this is finding outside is to cap it and pressurize the pipe and see if it holds pressure. I have a sneaky feeling and that's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, so for today I'm going to cut this back here. All right. This might be the solution to my problem because my Santa Flow pump needs its own vent line as well. So I might be able to use this thing, but I won't know until I pressure test it. I'm going to do that with the guy from Santa Flow when he comes out. We're going to make a video on how to hook it up. We're going to add that testing procedure to that video. I think that'll be fascinating because if this doesn't pressurize, it means it gets to fresh air and then I can use it as my vent. It makes my life so much easier. It's just going to delay everything for another week. I can't get an inspection until I get all that sorted out. You know, when life gives you a gift horse, you got to be able to pay attention and realize there is no way for mice to get through that and nest here. But if, if they had to come up through the other way. So because it's all spray foamed, I can't tell if it's connected, but if I pressure test it, we'll know for sure. We're gonna move on with drilling our hole and getting our fan installed. So in today's world of crazy contracting prices, if you wanna get something done, you better do it yourself. Remember, there's no better contractor in the world than your own self in your own house. So because our window is so deep, I can't do a traditional situation where I would drill a hole in my ridge beam. I, I don't have the, the length of my drill is restricted, plus the drill bits, plus the brick. There's, I can't do the job from inside, so I gotta do it from outside. So what we're gonna do is we are going to line up an eye line here, vertical off the side of the frame, right up to the middle of that cavity from outside. So I know where the middle is. And then I'm gonna take tape on this glass right at my eye level. This is my eye level and I'm going to take this measuring tape and I'm going to measure the joist and that's a nine inch. So the middle of that is four and a half. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my measurement right here, get the camera right level and I am looking at 51 and a half inches minus four and a half. And to me, that's 47. 51 and a half inches minus four and a half is 47. So now I'm gonna go outside with my marker and I measure from that green tape, 47 inches up, vertical on this. That's where I'm gonna make my hole. And this is the vinyl trim that we're talking about, right? Here we go. So let's get 47 on my tape line and then I'll hold that there. There we go. Our brick is mortar to mortar is three inch that I can get by getting one brick out. And our dryer, or sorry, our fan exhaust is only three inch. So I'm just gonna take out here and here, and that'll be my spot. Piece of cake, because I can get a three inch pipe in there like that. All right, so here's my pipe. Three inch pipe is, it's a three inch diameter, okay? So as long as my hole is just a little bit bigger than three inches, I'm fine. And I need the plastic collar here to get in that hole as well. Let's just trace this out. It's three and an eighth, go to mortar joint to mortar joint. Okay, and we can clean off mortar really easy in these scenarios. Three inch to here. I'm gonna make this a little bit simpler. About three and a quarter wide. Okay, so that's what we're gonna get rid of. Now, the easiest way to do this is to take your grinder with your masonry bit, remove all of the mortar first, then the brick breaks off easy. That's a really good start. Next up, we take a masonry drill bit on hammer drill. Medium speed is fine. We want to finish going all the way through because remember this brick is three inches, maybe four inches thick. And then there's an airspace behind that. So once we've cleaned out the mortar all the way around, I can hit this with a hammer and it'll shatter right off. Regular drill. Make sure you have batteries on the charger when you do this. <laughs> I 
There you go. So that, that's, that's totally disengaged now. I'm gonna go through a couple of batteries and we'll finish cleaning all that out. Aha! That's why you always buy two of these bits. That's probably close enough. All right, um, where's my safety glasses? Oh, screw it. Safety squints. Yeah, that's definitely uh, definitely the right prick. So now I gotta kind of break it in two or three pieces so I can pull it out, right? Sooner or later. It'll give up the ghost. Okay, finally. Let's see what we got here. There. That's what we were cutting through. Now, yeah, now we got a perfect hole. A little bit of mortar in here still. That's gonna work out perfectly. So here's the secret. We want a round hole, right? And yeah, and it's really hard to get a hole saw in a situation like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just draw a diamond Drill four holes with my with my regular wood bit. I'm gonna make them half inch holes, so that way I can get a nice long um, sawzall blade in there, and I can stick it right in and connect all the dots. We'll cut out that rim joist and the insulation, and we'll find out if we're in the right spot. All right. So the reason I got this huge bit on is because you know, like I'm going that far in to get the wood. I got to go inch and a half to get through the wood and probably three inches of foam. Hopefully we don't blow up any electrical lines. But I've done my due diligence. I'm pretty sure I know where I'm going. Oh, that's really, it's a lot more aggressive when you're standing on a ladder than you want it to be. There we go. So that was aspenite. You've got a rim joist and then aspenite sheathing. Uh, it's a little chipboard and those self-feed auger drill bits don't do anything in that. They just mush it up, and so you, you really gotta force your way in. But now that I'm into the wood, it'll pull right through in no time. Okay, now I'm into the foam. All right, now we grab the sawzall. The good news is, is I can see my fan from here. Just a quick tip, whenever you're working with a tool like this, don't stand behind it. If that blade catches something while the machine, while it's retracting, then the machine will throw you right off the ladder. Because <laughs> this is going in and out a couple of inches. So if you're right behind it and that happens, it'll toss you. You don't want to have that fall. Try to stand beside it. Keep the machine pressed against the wall so the blade is the only thing moving and let the tool do all the work. Yeah, a lot of times you'll end up cutting this like a wedge. So my blade was kind of forced in so I couldn't push it back, but there we go. Foam's still attached. Let's get rid of that. There we go. That's the wedge piece I was talking about. Okay. Now, all things are equal. We're gonna shove this in. Boom. Now we know it's installing. We're gonna take it out. I've got uh, one little secret I'm gonna share with you today. Developed this over the last little while. Whenever you have a brick and then an airspace, and then you have a weatherproofing system in behind that, it's because in the wind-driven rain, the rain gets in behind the brick. And it's designed to drain down to these holes and then come out of the wall. When you're in a four season climate, you can't afford to have moisture in behind your wall or it'll freeze and then expand and then blow up your brick. So because we know there's water traveling in behind it, because when we get storms here, it's usually a lot of wind. I'm gonna take my spray foam and I'm going to inject it across the top of this hole here, okay? And create it like a dam. So if water's coming down, it'll hit it and hopefully travel around left and right. 
and not get into this hole, eventually causing that to rot out. It's not a perfect science, but it's better than nothing. And when you get a chance like this to go a little overboard, you just take it because it makes good sense. And again, I'm not trying to insulate this hole. I'm trying to divert water trapped behind the brick away from my wood. Now I'm comfortable putting this in. But one more thing, I'm gonna take my exterior sealant. And this is white polyurethane exterior caulking. Okay, the company may be this, but there's lots of companies that make these products. Uh, I do like this Mulco though, I tell you. It's a good product to work with. And it's for exterior only. I once did this, used a product like this, Matthew, in somebody's bathroom to seal up the tub because I was so disappointed with silicones years back. So I sealed up their tub with an exterior. Oh, it'll be fine in a couple of days. The off gases kept them from using that bathroom for a week and a half, and they actually had to get a hotel for a couple nights. Oops, learned that one the hard way. All right, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna seal right here. There's no need to put huge amounts of gobs of caulking all around the brick and the trim, right? Now when you make the hole the same size as the pipe, a little dab there, a little dab there for good measure. And let's throw this in, make sure that the fins are going the right direction, that they all work. There we go. Get in past the foam, square it off. Press, square, set it and forget it. Now we can come across the top with just a thin bead, but it always looks a lot worse on brick than it does on vinyl. That's all I'm gonna do. Anything gets in the side, it's just gonna come out the bottom. I'm good with that. Cheers. So now I'm gonna take my spray foam and I'm gonna go and reintroduce foam around everything that's broken away. I wanna reinstate that thermal barrier, all right? Okay, have a look at that. Now all I gotta do is take these galvanized pipe, cut it to length, snap it together. Okay, cut it to length, snap it together. And these crimps actually make this end of the pipe smaller than the other end, which means I'll be able to insert this in the existing hole, but I gotta wait till tomorrow because I need all of that adhesive caulking to set up and cure before I can put any pressure on it, right? But by the time tomorrow comes around, the caulking will be set, that expansion foam will be good, and I'll be able to cut and measure this and then make a quick connection to the fan using a flexible ducting. Once I get my rigid pipe into this working area, I can take a piece of this, I can stick it up and stretch it to encapsulate both ends. Use a little foil tape on the machine, sorry, on the fan and the other joint, and then I'm good to go. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking, oh, wait a minute, I wanna see how you wire a fan. I wanna see all the connections with the ducting and what, what do you insulate the exhaust line? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. We have another video that's more comprehensive and you can check that link out right over here. And if you're doing major projects like this, consider joining our membership program. We've got our own forum, guys, where we can help you out. You can send me pictures and I can answer questions. Cheers till next time.